Um, but yeah, my previous career was uh, in the field of architecture. So I have like a little bit more knowledge on this thing. Um, so I thought I would have chat or not chat, but um, the discord slash chat submit videos related to architecture exclamation mark discord. If you want to submit something, I don't know if I'll get to all of it tonight um, because I have a lot that I want to do tonight. Uh, because in addition to watching some architecture related videos, I have a few games I want to play. Um, a few demos, I should say, that I want to try. The first one, this just released today, actually, the demo did for a game called Retro Wave 84. Um, I want to check this one out. It looks ridiculous. Architect D's nuts lamau hashtag demo. <laughs> What's up, Chico? Uh, so there was Retro Wave. Uh, what was the other one? I had a fucking list. This one is not a demo. Technically, it's a free game. Bloody hell it was recommended in my discord. I don't know how long it is, so I don't know if I'll get through all of it tonight, but I want to at least try it. And then uh, there was one more. This one is called Era Exordium. Uh, and this one looks kind of cool. I like the art style. It actually it looks like steampunk blasphemous. Uh, is that crazy? Anyways, uh, they all look very cool. And then once I'm done with that, hopefully that only takes uh, an hour or two. Then I'm going to go and hopefully make some progress in Hi-Fi Rush. So I think if all goes well, tonight will actually be a little bit longer of a stream. Um, I hope that's cool. I've done short dumpster dives for the last few weeks. Short and not on Mondays. So I'm back on Mondays. I'm going a little longer. And um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's good. Hopefully you enjoy. And uh, without further ado, let's just get right the the flip into it. <laughs> um, so I had a video. This one is not directly related to architecture, but I thought maybe starting it off with a video that is um, that is on something that's both related to architecture and near and dear to my heart would be a good idea. Um, and it's from a channel that you're all probably familiar with. I think I've literally watched this channel's videos on the dumpster dive before. Uh, but this is video from Game Maker's Toolkit. And it's called... Yo, Marino, thank you for the five gifted. Holy shit, look at... That's, a, that's quite the crew that received the gifted there. Uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is a great, this is a great video. Um, it's on my, it's about how my favorite level in Dishonored 2 was designed. It's a little bit long, but you know, just humor me. This, this video is very, very good. Very worth watching. But I want to find this out for myself. Fuck. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. Cause, uh, I'm just going to watch this and then we'll move on to other stuff. If you need to mute the tab or something to avoid spoilers, there will be some spoilers for Dishonored 2. Um, now you should play Dishonored 2. Um, but this doesn't necessarily, I don't think it spoils anything story related, but it does show like a pretty cool level. So if you want to experience that for yourself blind, then this is your warning. And there will be a quiz after the stream. <laughs> Put my submission to the Dumpster Dive channel. Thank you very much. The only architecture video I know would spoil most of Hollow Knight. I'll have to watch that after Hollow Knight. I'm very curious. Anyways, a let's do this. Ball, a brilliant bank heist and a house trapped between yeah, two moments oh, in time. <laughs> Thank you, Britta, for the five gifted. Wow, what do you know? <laughs> the last 30 bucks I had on this debit card. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And now we got a hype train, apparently. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you for all the gifted. Thank you so much. Trying to start the hype train. You got it started. You got it started. Anyways, I'm going to watch this video. The Dishonored series is famous for its intricate and imaginative level design. This is, these but are my favorite games of all time, by the way. Truly so Sorry to pause already 15 seconds into the video. These are my favorite games of all time. So I am like a total... Not only do I love the architecture in these games, I think the levels are like beautifully designed and just look amazing. Um, you <laughs> Bobber, thank you for the uh, thank you for the one gifted. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Dishonored is easily my favorite game after Doom Eternal. Very based. Um, yeah, sorry, I turned down the video just a little bit. 
Bixby fits that description. It's the clockwork I hope it's good now. from Dishonored 2. A shape-shifting state. Weirdly enough, Game Maker's Toolkit actually mixes their video as well. Disappear into the floor, and the furniture gets rearranged by hidden mechanisms. It's the home of one Kieran Jindosh, an eccentric inventor who is building an army of robotic soldiers, and has also imprisoned your pal Sokolov in his basement. So you'll need to get in, take control. Y'all gotta play Dishonored. It's so good. From making any more robots and bust Sokolov out. Are we reviewing game architecture? I figured I'd start off with this uh, because it's related to both. Um, if you have a video on it or something that you want me to react to, you can feel free to post it in the Discord. But I, I'm not like drawing the line at uh, at game architecture. What's Dishonored about? Um, you are an assassin who gets framed for killing the empress of like your nation, and you basically go and kill a bunch of political opponents to clear your name. <laughs> it's very so, fun. Welcome to On the Level. A it is an immersive sim, sim yeah. Play excellent video game stages alongside the designers who made them. For this episode, I played through the Clockwork Mansion while talking to level designer Dana Nightingale. She was responsible for planning out the mansion's layout and its gameplay beats using flowcharts and prototypes. <laughs> this is actually so cool. Also on the call was David DiGiacomo, the level's artist. His job was to actually build the mansion. Not an assassin the royal guard. The yeah, but you become an assassin. Yeah, that, that's... Dana's ideas into reality. But that, that's a fair I point. That in this video, David's answers will be in French with English subtitles. So, before I open the door and enter the mansion, I asked Dana how she first came to work on this level. No, you you don't understand, Flippy. You kill the political bad the, guys. Uh, knife of Dunwall, and <laughs> I was just shown a list, a rather long list of all of the uh, potential uh, level ideas that the team was brainstorming to include in Dishonored 2. And one of them was um, the mansion of a clockwork inventor. Like I, I skim the list and I, I look at the list thinking this is going to be super hard to decide. How am I going to know which one to pick? And I see that one and I'm like, yeah, that one. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Do you remember Sounds any like of the radical ideas, ideals to me. I only remember the others that I prototyped. Everything. I there is no like. There's no sane people in this universe for what it's worth. Everyone's a radical. <laughs> it's just the way it works. Do uh, a prototype for a um, a redux of the masquerade ball. This is one of the best levels in Dishonored One. Do not do. We didn't want to try to. Uh, what I, What I love about this level is that you can get through the whole thing without any combat. Now in Dishonored, you can choose to do either lethal or non-lethal combat. But in this level in particular, you can get through the entire thing just by talking to people uh, and just being, you know, smart about who you talk to and where you talk to them and stuff like that. Um, it, it's, it's such a great level. It's the best or maybe second best level in all of Dishonored 1. Uh, out Boyle, Lady Boyle immediately, though we are now revisiting it for Deathloop, the party with all the wolf masks. And another one that was actually supposed to be part of the Clockwork Mansion was the uh, Wind Corridor. And you were supposed to have to travel through that oh, that's in order cool. to get to Jindash's mansion. So first you go through these uh, crazy factories with all these mechanics built around the wind being strong enough to actually pick you up and blow you away. But that really didn't make it very far. That would have been really so cool the if they actually did that. Nailed down, and we realized we had too much, so we we had to uh, like let go of a few of the ideas, and that was one of them. So once you had that prompt, what did you do next? Uh, so then I just started um, prototyping. So no concept at all of what the layout would be, what what the, the challenges would be. The only thing we knew for sure was you got the emotes. It was going to be the inventor. Uh, Sokolov <laughs> was going to play a role. And there were these uh, clockwork soldiers. Other than that, it was just prototyping different moving rooms, different layouts. Oh, and a big emphasis from like day zero on letting the player be inside the mechanisms. It was always about this. That's the other crazy thing is like, like it's not only crazy that the, the rooms move and that this concept even works at all. Um, but the fact that you can look behind the curtain and like see all the mechanisms and like it actually all works mechanically is fucking insane. Divide between the space for normal people and the space where the player could go uh, in the guts of the building, which was very in line with. The, I added uh, the that emote a while ago. I'm surprised from, uh, it took that long for you to see it. Always this 
threshold between where normal people can go and where a supernatural assassin can go. It was always kind of a sense of a, of a behind the scenes, even from the earliest Dishonored map, but now we could take it a step even further. Shall there we? were more concepts and prototypes for the level, but we'll come back to them later. For now, I'd better start the stage itself. So, the mansion begins in a small, innocuous entryway, and there's not much for me to do than to pull on this strange lever. <laughs> so what did you want to achieve with this first transformation? This was just to make the player, like, sh themselves, basically. <laughs> Why do I say that? <laughs> that Should is so cool. Uh, the, the point of this part was to just, you know, wow the player. David, what do you remember about actually building this part of the map? The animations are just so beautiful in this level. The Dana était qu'on arrive dans une pièce, une toute petite pièce fermée avec peu de d'ouverture et d'options pour pouvoir en, en sortir. Et là, on passe deux murs aux couleurs froides. The enemy euh, looks like a bionicle, yeah. Et puis, euh, They do kind of look like bionicles. Petit, euh, le petit espace qu'on avait au départ euh, nous donne accès à quelque chose de beaucoup plus grand et nous ouvre euh, <laughs> la perspective dans la, pour la, la pièce d'après pour, pour I pouvoir can understand évoluer. This. There's Mais literally voilà, subtitles. On, on pouvait imaginer quelques meubles fixés sur les plateformes mouvantes. Et voilà, fallait prendre en compte le, le volume qu'elles pouvaient prendre ne, do you see Lego uh, released another Bionicle space, set? Uh, yeah, they're super the ugly, aren't they? In a neutral state. What was the thought behind that? The initial idea is basically is a Bionicle. Is immediately no, it looks like the. Um, I mean, not that it doesn't look like a Bionicle. It looks like the uh, the droids, like the the droids with the long heads from uh, from Star Wars. I don't remember what they're called, but it looks like those guys more than it looks like Bionicle to me. Are they just called droids? I thought they were like a specific type of droids, but yeah, you might be right. It's only a promotion set. Got to spend $140 or more. What the fuck? That's such an overwhelming thing to do to the player immediately. So uh, what I wanted to do to like let the player focus on uh, the drama of the moment and giving them a chance to look at the clockwork soldier was to to start it off. Yeah, this is the introduction of this enemy and of course, too. The trouble was is that 80% of the players um, would just hide already. They they would um, they would assume that it's possible. <laughs> we actually decided to like let that work. It just so stares you at you. That's kind of cool, actually. The soldier doesn't see you. Jindash will start to say like, "B uh, one uh, battle droid." Okay. And then you can continue through the map in the in that perfect stealth run. And it's we, actually wild. I, players... I didn't know. I was trying to do the, the game uh, the first time I played it in stealth, but I didn't know what would qualify as pure stealth for this. Um, and so I went through it like, you know, talking to Jindosh and with him knowing I was there, I had no idea you could hide from him completely. Uh, which is insane. So I ended up, I think, having to to kill him or at least incapacitate him. But there is a way to completely avoid him, which is really cool. And it uses the actual mechanisms of the level. They're actually reacting and rather than just fighting against it, you like have to just go with it and say, well, this is their natural reaction. What do we give them to validate this uh, reaction? 20 David, minutes into stream, chat's talking about Bionicle porn. Idée, and by chat, I mean my moderators. With a plafond that was high, a piece that was a little bit dark. And the fact that to activate the transformation, it would So, truth be chose. told, I don't think we necessarily need to watch this whole thing. I think you get the idea, though. Um, I definitely, if you're curious about this, I definitely recommend watching this whole video. Um, it goes... It goes way into detail about um, like how they hid all these rooms and like a lot of them transform in different ways. Uh, so I, I highly recommend it. But in in uh, in the interest of saving time, uh, I'm just going to say this is one of my favorite videos just on the video game medium uh, and you should watch it. I just watched an hour 57 long video on the Roblox. Oof, that is a great video <laughs> without a doubt. I love that video. Um, you should also watch the one from Defunct Land about um, the Disney Channel theme song. Uh, it's base. It's like the same energy, kind of, as the Roblox Oof video, but uh, but a little more wholesome. Is it over? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be done watching it now. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be done watching it for now. 
by for now, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to watch the rest of it. Okay, what do we got here? Britta sent some from a channel called Top Luxury. Oh, these, are, these are decently short. This one's Saudi Arabia's $1 trillion skyscraper. This, I, I think I've actually maybe seen this one. But, uh, or I've seen, I've seen the skyscraper that this, uh, is based on. Yeah, the live. It's very interesting. Saudi Arabia has just unveiled plans for the biggest and most absurd mega project ever. The Crown Prince you must Mohammed watch, bin Salman. You must watch my video while extremely stoned. I just ran out of my, my legal Minnesota edibles. Um, so that unfortunately will not be a possibility tonight, but maybe some other time. <laughs> On wants to build two 500 meter tall parallel skyscrapers stretching 100. I shouldn't even need to say this, but this is so impractical. There's absolutely nothing. Uh, this this is solving nothing, <laughs> basically. It's it's completely impractical. The only purpose is just to create some cool renderings and probably there. At some point, money is probably being laundered here, right? Like <laughs> or something like that. This is so unbelievably pointless. 170 kilometers across mountains and desert terrain. The project is called the Mirror Line. And wasteful. Can I can I just say wasteful too? Uh, I mean, the idea of like terraforming the desert to make like a habitable city there is not. It's not a horrible one, like in theory, but it requires so much water. It requires so much water, and especially out in the desert, it's like, where the fuck are you getting that water from, you know? <laughs> One drought and this shit all goes to hell, man. <laughs> it's a cool idea, but it's just so not practical. Anyways, I'll, I'll let the video just run. There's water right there, yeah, and yeah, sea water. reality would be like building 2,000 One World Trade Centers next to each other twice <laughs> since only 12 skyscrapers in the world have crossed the 500 meter height barrier so far building 4,000 of these at the same time and at the same place sounds like a ridiculous idea so Fuck why Vegas. has saudi arabia announced something so insane can they really make it happen or are they just trying to gain worldwide attention Aliyom. The crazy thing is that these like oil tycoon, oil baron guys uh, out there have like uh, so much money that it may as well be infinite and it's still not enough to build something like this. <laughs> Just to be extremely clear, uh, the amount of money that this would actually cost to build, I mean, one trillion dollars, like <laughs> nobody just has one trillion dollars. There are zero trillionaires in the world. <laughs> They're making Halo reach. <laughs> Few countries in the world can claim to have a transformation plan as ambitious as Saudi Arabia. In 2016, the kingdom announced Vision 2030, a diversification plan that would reduce the country's dependence on oil and shift the economy towards tourism, technology, and other sectors. Since then, they have revealed you a like master lines? plan called well, okay, Niam, Flippy, this is your city. Future. Niam will be a futuristic <laughs> smart city and currently consists of three massive mega projects. The first part of the development is a floating eight-sided industrial complex called the Oxagon, <laughs> which would serve- uh, Why? <laughs> why can't this just go in the line? <laughs> this, you know what? I, I will say this is probably the best part of this project. This, I mean, I don't know why you're building like the actual like- <laughs> Why you're building the, the biggest bulk of it on the water, but this is actually probably the best part. As a port for shipping routes through the Red Sea. In addition, the city will have a major outdoor skiing destination called Trojina in the Arabian Peninsula, where entertainment and events should take place throughout the entire year. Actually, decent However, idea. It should have stopped plans there. Are as extravagant as the Mirror Line that was first announced in January 2021. More details of this proverbial yeah, the line mirror have been thing is a real problem recently, too. And calling it insane would be an understatement. Well, it's not a problem per se in the desert, but. Why does it have to be mirrored? Is there is there like a um like a thermal benefit to that? I feel like there's not. Like cuz you could just paint it black 
and it would it would just absorb all the light basically or uh or paint it white to reflect it i suppose i've got it backwards but you know to blend in yeah that's but why though yeah no black would absorb it you're right i i said the opposite of what i meant for style points they're going for that they're going for that desert p rank <laughs> so what is the mirror line it's made up of two 500 meter high buildings that will run parallel to each other across for 100 200 miles of desert <laughs> terrain. These parallel structures will have mirrored exteriors and just 200 meters of space in between to house a city of 9 million residents. <laughs> the linear city will start at the coast Bro, of the Bro, imagine of you Akaba work on the other the end. <laughs> and reach into the country, cutting through mountains and desert terrain. The two mirrored facades. I like how even in their like wildest prediction for what this city will look like, desert. it just fucking ends randomly in the desert. <laughs> it just like they don't even go all the way across the country. They just end eventually. It's like, yeah, this is where our one trillion dollars runs out after 200 miles. <laughs> Terrain. The two mirrored facades will be connected via walkways. Most of the interiors will be vertically. Built Why is that person flying? Parks offices and homes on top of each other. So basically, their plan is to stack the infrastructure of a normal city vertically on top of each other. So, but not only so that, dystopian. Their plan is also to be 100% sustainable and feature the most modern technology. People love to just say that shit. Like, like, yeah, we're going to build the biggest, most ridiculous city you've ever seen, and it's going to be super inefficient, but uh, it's going to be sustainable. We're going to offset it all. <laughs> Yeah, no, you wouldn't get natural sunlight in there, straight up. Like, I, if you live on the lowest level, you definitely wouldn't. <laughs> Those living inside will be sustainable. Is such a buzzword. Integrated into the 500 meter high walls. On top of that, the structure is supposed to include a marina for yachts and a sports stadium built up to 305 meters above the ground. Of course, there's a, a marina for yachts, it, bro. Or will it ever be? Saudi Arabia's crown prince has called the mirror line a revolution in civilization. But the mirror line seems more like a massive wonderland <laughs> that will come to life straight out of a fiction book. Yeah. Saudi Arabia wants to build parts of it by 2030 and move uh -huh. in more than a million tenants. However, while humanity has built some massive structures in some of the most difficult landscapes, the mirror line simply promises too much in too little time. Saudi Arabia's latest track record when building extraordinary skyscrapers isn't great either. Stairs look For like example, I'd fall into the, the void Jeddah every Tower, 10 seconds. Which was supposed to become the tallest building in the world, remains on hold and only reached Why around one like, third I guess of its, it's original like proposed height. Passage of time. Side, Saudi Arabia is home to the fourth <laughs> tallest skyscraper in the world. <clears throat> The mirror line is unlike anything ever built in history, but it could be compared to the grand plans of the Illinois over 60 years ago. This building what is was this? supposed to be one oh, mile Frank Lloyd high, Wright? which was just insane at the time. Just like the Illinois, the mirror line- Yeah, Frank Lloyd Wright's unbuilt plans are uh, insane, to say the least. There, There is some very wild, outlandish stuff that he proposed that was never built. I don't think he thought it would get built. I think he just did it for fun, but yeah crazy stuff i've been in the third tallest skyscraper what is the sears tower now because i've been to the top of that but that's about it <clears throat> may only remain limited to paper or in this case to 3d renderings and marketing videos but this time the whole world is watching and around 50 million shanghai tower is second oh well that's better their trailers so why does Saudi Arabia propose something so extraordinary when the promises <laughs> most likely can't be met? Yeah, no Ever kidding. Ever since Mohammed bin Salman took over the affairs of the country, Saudi Arabia has gone on a drive to rebrand its image. Projects like the Mirror Line are a part of that rebranding effort and are guaranteed to attract international attention. Saudi Arabia wants to be seen as a country that has yes, much more to but... offer and they want to <laughs> diversify the economy towards tourism. But as of now, most visitors to the country make the trip for pilgrimage. Uh, does Alaskan Airlines fly to Saudi like Arabia? <laughs> Saudi Arabia wants to be seen differently in the international community. The project also holds significance for Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman personally, who has compared it with some Wanna of the Want to know what that shit would look like from space? Probably pretty cool. The mirror line as my pyramids. 
Niam is supposed to become Saudi Arabia's own architectural landmark, and announcing an unbelievable project in the middle of Just it- Just build a fucking city! Just build like a normal ass city! <laughs> Why does it gotta be like it showed a picture of Shanghai? Shanghai's cool and it's just a city. It's just like a normal fucking city. I mean, say what you want about China, of course, but like Shanghai is just like it's you know, it just exists, you know, it's not a fucking line. It's not a it's not built in the water. It's the <laughs> We'll build anticipation. In addition, the website states that Neom is a vision of what- This is a Squarespace template. <laughs> Am I crazy? This is straight up, this looks like a Squarespace template. <laughs> a new future might look like. So it could also be seen as a research project for alternative city structures and modern transportation concepts. With the announcement of the mirror line, Saudi Arabia has successfully gained international attention. However, I mean, most responses yeah. haven't been positive. I Many wonder why. Are left unanswered. <laughs> they want to build a city with a 100% sustainable transport system and zero emissions. However, there's Why no are you going to make it the longest city on earth then, bro? It's lucky it doesn't make any sense. Like that's great if you want to, I mean, you need a transportation system if you're going to make your city a big-ass line, but, like, come on, man. No <laughs> mention of the massive Mecca carbon footprint pay to that win. building Holy something shit. like this will leave behind. According to estimates from Oldfield at the University of New South Wales, building the line would emit close to 2 billion tons of <laughs> CO2, which is more than four okay. years of all yeah. CO2 emissions in the United Kingdom. The promise of creating a carbon neutral city doesn't sound too convincing when considering these immense Yeah, this stuff emissions. is fun to make. I never made like city scale like rendering stuff, but we would do this at my at my previous job too. Like also, this type of stuff, these flashy renderings. Saudi Arabia's human rights record and are already calculating the human cost of Saudi Arabia's plans. No in shit. In the region, there are several indigenous tribes who lived in towns and villages for hundreds of years. According to ForeignPolicy.com, there are around 20,000 people that are forced to make room for Neom. Saudi security forces have also Just been accused some of shit. shooting at least one pro- Hell, where's Mr. Beast when you need him? He'll plant- he'll plant some trees to offset this shit. <laughs> Next Mr. Beast video. I built a city in a perfectly straight line, and the last person to leave wins a million dollars. Tester of the development Saudi Arabia is an IRL the battle royale has also <laughs> failed to impose effective labor reform yo I'd play a battle royale in the line city that would be sick and so far authorities have given no roadmap for tackling the issue a flimsy human rights record has become a hot topic and will create hurdles in raising the funds for the trillion dollar mega project the planners had hoped to attract foreign investors, but the country remains largely boycotted by the Western world and economic partnerships. Okay, I are think we've gotten the idea here. I like I don't think anyone thinks that uh that what Saudi Arabia is doing is cool, nor that the city will get built. <laughs> it looks like a split gate map. That's so true. I suppose that for memes more than anything. Well, you posted another one, and I really want to um, appreciate the thumbnail of this one. So I even paused the the loading of the of the page just so you all can see the thumbnail. <laughs> looks looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty normal. <laughs> Little sauce, I agree. The FIFA World Cup is one of the biggest events on the this planet. Is, uh, by the way, this is what happens to stadiums after the World Cup, Drawing just to be clear. billion viewers worldwide. But when that attention turns away again, what happens to the stadiums left behind? Today, we'll explore the troubling fate of World <laughs> Cup so, stadiums in Russia, Brazil, and South Africa. I think that was designed by... I think Qatar. that stadium, the one that looks like, uh, you know what, I think was designed by an architect called Zaha Hadid. Uh, and if you don't know who she is... Uh, I, I can go I can go more into her architecture. Um, it's very uh, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. She she was an important figure for like just women in architecture and, and being a Middle Eastern woman, no less, uh, like really kind of paved the way. But uh, her architecture, frankly, is is horrible. <laughs> it's really bad. Our plans to deal with this situation and why they have already begun dismantling one of their stadiums. 
Currently, only 3.2% of our viewers are subscribed to our channel, so if you enjoy our videos, make sure to click that button. Baby. <laughs> Over the past decade, Qatar has built an entire World Cup infrastructure Plug. with modern stadiums, state-of-the-art training facilities. Yeah, so this and just happened. This is topical. Links. In total, they spent more than two hundred billion dollars. Smash that button! Astronomical sum. This is way more than any other host ever spent, mainly because Qatar had to build the majority of this infrastructure from scratch. I love time Four lapses of stuff being Russia's built, even when it's gross, ugly stuff. I just love watching all the like pieces snap together really fast, because like in real time, you can never like you don't see progress being made on construction project projects. Spent closer to 16 billion, while Brazil spent 20 in 2014. But even 20 billion dollars is a lot of money, especially. I ran the numbers on your YouTube channel. According to my analytics, only one viewer isn't subbed to the channel. You should call them out. Huh. <laughs> what does that mean? Considering the entire event is over. Yes, I know what it looks like, chat. I know what it looks Besides like. Besides gaining worldwide attention, countries I'm very the aware. World Cup infrastructure <laughs> will offer long-term benefits. The transport links could breathe that, that new life stay into previously run-down areas, while stadiums could start to pay for themselves by hosting concerts and events. It's a bold vision, vibrant venues outliving their original purpose. But it doesn't always work like that. When we look at the history of World Cup stadiums, it doesn't paint a pretty picture. Qatar has other plans, which we'll get to later. But first, let's see what they're trying so hard to avoid. Yo, mama's so fat, her crotch is in Qatar for real. So what Jesus. happened in previous World Cups? I'm trying to in educate all of you on architecture. Cup, Russia built nine new Thoughts on the New Orleans Superdome? Uh, ugly. But it's also old, you know? It's kind of an old building. But yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> stadiums and upgraded three existing venues. The cost of all this is hard to pin down. Have you seen the RBG a statue on a courthouse in New York? I think US so. Dollars that Russia I think so. On the tournament as a whole. When the World Cup ended, Russia decided to rent these It's something, yeah. There's also the teams. Cristiano Ronaldo one. Step. These stadiums were designed Ruth Bader to Ginsburg. Matches, and the ticket sales would help. She's a U.S. Supreme costs. Court justice. But this strategy failed. Russia's teams aren't well supported, and most of them- We watch something else, I'm tired of empty promises. Hey, this one got built. I'm, I'm telling you. Was, to yeah. Sell even half the tickets to matches. At the Fisht Olympic Stadium in Sochi, the local team draws an average of 6,000 fans, barely 15% of the stadium's Jesus total Christ. capacity. These low attendances make it hard to cover the running costs. The stadiums are- Yeah, a lot of these just end up totally shut down. Bill. They've been Olympic stadiums as, as well. Elephants, expensive, pointless, and burdensome. A year after the World Cup, when the Kaliningrad Stadium began to sink into a swamp, it cost almost a million dollars to save it. From a financial perspective, it would have made more sense to just let the Kaliningrad Stadium collapse. Only one of Russia's nine new stadiums is enjoying a successful afterlife. Jesus Kazan Christ. Arena has been turned into a multi-purpose venue, hosting football matches, concerts, car shows, and fashion events. It's also decked out with restaurants, bars, and hotel rooms. Actually interested Maybe in architecture, so I'm happy I stuck around long success. enough to see this. Transform the stadium it's good, I'm glad. I might do more on, on the subject of architecture, when since I just know a lot about it. Countries. Four years before Russia, the World Cup host was Brazil, a nation whose stadiums tell a similar story. Most of them are used by domestic teams with thousands of empty seats. Brazil. I, I think the real, the real problem here is the the state of the economy and government in the countries where these stadiums are located. Right. I think that's the real crux of the issue here. Right. Is a. Remember when the Saints Superdome was pre-Katrina? I mean, it looks the same, doesn't it? It looks similar. Footballing nation, but its stadiums are simply too large to fill. The most striking example is the Arena de Amazonia in the remote city of Manaus. The stadium <laughs> is meant to seat 40,000 people, but the local team draws crowds no larger than a thousand. It's leaking money Jesus. at an alarming rate. More than that's not even that big of a stadium. Month. In a desperate effort to cover costs, another World Cup stadium, the Estadio Nacional, has recently been used as a bus shelter. Meanwhile, <laughs> the Arena Das Dunas is trying to make money by hosting weddings and That's a nice-looking arena. 
It sounds even worse when we consider the fact that some of these stadiums only hosted four World Cup matches. Was all of this worth it for just six hours of football? Brazilian taxpayers don't think so. A quarter of the country- I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, he's probably about to say this, but I don't think this is where the taxpayers are living. ...is living in poverty, and instead of sinking money into loss-making stadiums, they would prefer to see their taxes... These are actually pretty nice-looking stadiums, am I crazy? Brazilian reporter summed it you ever played Driver San Francisco? No, but that game looks interesting. ...World Cup legacy to Brazil, except the debts we have inherited. Four years earlier, the World Cup was hosted in South Africa. These stadiums are doing slightly better than the ones in Russia and It's very Brazil. hard to get right now? Yeah, I've watched, that, uh, I've watched that Nick Robinson video on it, it's really interesting. And he paid for it with like a subway gift card or something. It was like so, it, the most like back alley deal I've ever seen on the internet. <laughs> on like the non dark web, basically. It's just crazy. Yeah, the Brazilian stadiums looked pretty nice. It's a shame they're not being used. In the city of Durban. Yeah, you should watch that video. It's by Nick Robinson, I believe. Um, and yeah, he, he straight up paid for the game with the Subway gift card because whatever storefront key reseller he bought it from uh, accepted Subway gift cards as, uh, as payment for some fucky reason. Now operates as a multi-purpose venue. As well as hosting events and music concerts, visitors can ride a sky car to the Whoa. top of the central arch and even do some bungee jumping. What? I mean, that's kind of cool. Africa's stadiums aren't all successful. The Cape Town Stadium, complete with 65,000 seats, has never turned a profit. There have even been several Yeesh. calls to demolish the stadium, and it might only be a matter of time. Qatar is keen to avoid these mistakes of previous big World toilet Cups, scene. <laughs> especially after their bid was mired in lots of controversy, with almost 30 FIFA officials forced to step down after evidence of corruption and bribery. Things got even worse. Oh, God. Yeah, FIFA is Amnesty part of the problem here, too, undoubtedly. Exploitation of migrant workers. Many of these workers were poorly paid or not paid at all. And see if I get paid enough, I do it. You would probably have to pay to do it. In 2021, an investigative report by The Guardian newspaper estimated that more than 6,000 workers had died in Qatar since <laughs> the World Cup. <laughs> That's Overall, fucking horrible. What the hell? The country's global reputation. About what? That's such an outlandish Chris. number that it almost doesn't feel real. That's insane. Advised for are there plans what? to deal with the World Cup stadiums when the tournament comes to an end? Six thousand deaths. So, what are Qatar's plans for their World Cup stadiums? The existence of eight colossal stadiums would be irrational for a country God, as small eight? as Qatar. To put it into perspective, the nation is home to 400,000 Qatari citizens. The stadiums, meanwhile, I get, I, like I guess they host games simultaneously, so they have to have multiple stadiums. But again, like building eight stadiums and then not using it was just so wasteful. to hold 420,000. Russia is home to 140 million people, while Brazil is home to 220. Yeah, our These city literally is bigger than World Qatar. Stadiums, <laughs> Qatar won't stand a chance, but Qatar won't try to fill them. Instead, they want to transform them. Okay. Sounds nice, the in two theory. The largest stadiums, Lusail and Albait, will be transfigured into modern, multi-purpose venues. At Lusail Stadium, most of the seats will be removed to make way for shops, cafes, a school, a health clinic, school. and maybe even some apartments. Albate will undergo a similar process. It will be turned into a five-star hotel, a shopping mall, and a hospital. They're, in they're so big, though. I mean, like... A shopping mall and a hospital are, like, like big things, but, like, this is a big, empty space, you know? Like, it's not, it's not so simple as, like, just section it off and plop that stuff in there. Like, you want to have natural light inside. You have, like, the big bleacher part already is, like, a, a, a huge thing problem to work around. I mean, it could, this could just be, like, something that you can tear down, but a lot of times it's, like, it's, like, poured concrete. So, it's not that simple. And then again, like, t you talk about the waste. Like, if you're ripping all of this out, that's so wasteful as well. It doesn't, it doesn't really make any sense. That plan doesn't add up in my mind. ...of the stadiums, the pitch will be kept right at the heart of the other amenities, but it will mainly okay. be used to host community events as opposed to professional football matches. 
three more of the stadiums, Ahmad bin Al. This is a nice idea, but I feel like it just was used to get these funded. Like, right? <laughs> We're out of rooms at the five-star hotel. Go sleep under the bleachers. Good plan. Good plan. <laughs> Al Janoub and Al Tumama Stadium will Al still be used for football matches, but only after the venues are massively downsized. Eat the seats. In all three cases, the capacity will be cut from 45,000 down to 20,000 by removing temporary seating. <laughs> Via fireplace to paintball in? Yeah, they should just turn them into paintball <laughs> arenas, because that's all they're going to be once they fucking start crumbling anyways, right? <laughs> So used in Russia, with temporary stands squeezed at the end of Ekaterinburg Central Stadium. Qatar promised I mean, that's to kind of a that's kind of a nice-ish idea. Who are looking to improve their sporting infrastructure? The downside. Can you just do that? Cedar stadiums will probably struggle to reach capacity, since the Qatari Football League sometimes only draws crowds as small as a couple hundred people. But then there's Stadium 974, the most innovative solution of all. This okay. stadium is a completely temporary venue, the first of its kind in World Cup history. It was constructed using 974 recycled shipping containers and can be fully dismantled and rebuilt again somewhere else. It's a groundbreaking approach to sporting infrastructure and something future World Cups... So... My question anytime someone talks about moving a structure as big as this is what is the, the energy cost of putting it together, taking it apart, and then moving it all somewhere else? There's no way. Like, there's no way that that is in any way sustainable unless it just stays wherever it's going, right? Search of laws on paintball and airsoft in Qatar. Paintball is legal, but airsoft is not. Interesting. Theoretically, you can play paintball in one of those stadiums. I mean, it, it, only if it were like a sanctioned paintball arena, I guess, or uh, whatever you want to call them. It's kind of cool, but wasn't there a shipping container shortage? I don't know. I don't know. Was there? There are some... Uh, there's some environmental concerns about using shipping containers in construction in the first place on like a micro scale um, because they give off uh, they're, they're usually coated in things that are that are bad for like long term human health, like just to breathe. Um, so there are issues with that. But assuming that they've somehow solved that, you know, washed it off or treated it with something else, then maybe it's not an issue. I don't know. It's free to move it. If it was free, I wouldn't have to pay gas. Exactly. Simply stop breathing while living in a shipping container. I think if you're living in a shipping container, you might already have bigger problems. Unless the, it's one of those newfangled modern homes made out of shipping containers. Good. Simply live in the walls. That's the flippy solution. Adopt. Instead of building new stadiums in each host country, a set of temporary stadiums could be moved from place to place. Qatar is also planning to use their World Cup infrastructure to host some future events. That's what Brazil did in 2016 when they hosted the Summer Olympics. I mean, that's and great, no, but we just heard about how shit World their Cup stadiums are doing. However, when the Olympics ended, the situation was basically the yeah. same as before. In 2024, yeah. Qatar will host the Asian Cup, an international football tournament for teams Woo. in Asia and Oceania. They will also host the 2030 Asian Games, an international. I've never heard of these events in my life. Participants than the Olympics. Granted, I am in North in America. In cases, <laughs> they plan to reuse their World Cup infrastructure as much as possible, making sure the projects don't go to waste. They've also set their sights upon hosting the Olympics. Yeah, Maybe we'll see about that, Qatar. We'll see about that. Only time will tell whether any of these plans will actually work. But one of them is already underway. I've never heard of them, but I also never look at sports. Brazil Maybe you haven't heard of them because they're Asian. Yeah. Fifth, the I mean, I, I already said that. But yeah. Was put into action. Rumor has it the pieces of the stadium will be shipped to Uruguay, who are hoping to host the 2030 World Cup. So this one is actually pretty cool if they can pull it off. I, I do definitely have some concerns about the cost of dismantling it and shipping it. Like the energy cost of dismantling it and shipping it. But you know what? This at least is an interesting idea. What do you think? Are the mobile stadiums like this a good idea for future World Cups? Let us know. Let's see. Comments. I don't think anyone said anything interesting.
Nobody said anything interesting. Um, I do want to show, though, a, um, my music play. Wow, my entire music app froze. That's lovely. Um, I do want to show, though, a, a nice solution to this. Olympic Stadium Munich, Germany. Oops, I spelled it wrong. That's poggers. Um, so in Munich, there's this entire, uh, I guess, like Olympic park. And I've actually been here in person and it's really nice. Um, and, and they basically preserve this entire like Olympic compound is basically just like a park and they host like events and concerts and stuff here. So this is kind of a neat solution to, uh, of course, all the images are fucking awful. This is kind of a neat solution to this. And this Olympics was in the 70s too. And not only does the stadium and the park still look really nice, uh, but it's still getting used, which is really cool. Um, I believe they converted the aquatic center into an aquarium. Uh, and they, they just did a lot of, they did a lot of cool stuff uh, with this area, but especially this stadium with the big canopies. I, I always thought it was really cool. We need that dumper Minecraft server so you can show off your architect skill and point out the flaws of everyone's build. I, we will have to do that. I think this year we'll probably do something like that. I was going to show Zaha Hadid as well. Yeah, I mean, this is what pretty much everything that she designed looks like. It's always white and has these like weird kind of like flowy... And honestly, these ones I'm clicking on, obviously, there's this. Um, these ones I'm clicking on aren't that bad. I mean, that one's pretty ugly. <laughs> Smoking that Zaha. This one's pretty ugly. That's in Glasgow? Okay. This is probably, like, the most well-known one. I believe it's in Doha, uh, Qatar. And, uh, I don't know, it's not horrible, but... Yeah, there's a building in Belgium that's really pretty bad. Antwerp. Yeah, so this one, this is one in Antwerp, Belgium that Britta and I actually saw. We didn't like go up to it, but we saw it from like a like a high up like viewpoint. It's basically an old port building that just had like a big like glass structure glommed onto the top of it. It looks even worse from like this angle. <laughs> like that's just gross. That's just gross. Engineers hate architects. Is this true? Uh, architects who build stuff like this, definitely engineers hate them. Um, normal architects? No. Actually, I would say architects and engineers, in my experience, have a pretty friendly working relationship. Uh, but we also didn't, like, build crazy stuff like this. <laughs> Looks like it would fall over if I just threw a rock at it. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, it's really... It's really pretty ugly. Not my favorite architect uh, in terms of like the designs that she actually made. What else do we have? How long is this one? How many do I have to get through? Well, I can probably get through all of these. Okay, this one is called Why Paris Looks Weird. <laughs> On June 23rd, 1853, two men would set in motion one of the most ambitious urban projects in history. Because it's Changing France. The city of light. You know what? Video video over. We don't need to watch it. Because it's France. That's why it looks weird. Problem solved. This looks like it's about to become a teardown map. I turned it up. Let me know if it's still not good. A team had to be assembled. In charge, Haussmann and Louis Napoleon, the former a flamboyant, nearly two meter tall megalomaniac, who was appointed as the French made it Saint. look weird to begin with. They the they latter, chose this fate in public and hobbyist urban planner in private. Beneath them, some of the most brilliant architects. I know a little bit about this from my architecture history classes, but I I've never I've never seen a video on this subject, so this will be kind of interesting. Landscape designers and water. France, and it doesn't and look like incision. True, true. On paper, their strategy was to create new ordered space in the cramped and nasty Parisian streets. So they began by completing what the first Napoleon could not the Grand Cross of Paris. 
This meant completing the route of Rivoli from east to west, as well as constructing a similar north to south connection. These roads cut through. I love how the premise of this uh, of this video is why Paris looks so weird, and yet he's explaining how they started with like a pretty simple plan. Thousands of homes, and revealed a sinister. Another line, true. That of the urban planner, one of ruthless. <laughs> what about Muslims? And symmetry. Why is TTS off? Is TTS off? Being wide and dramatic, it's true. It doesn't that was have to be. Always part of the plan. Narrow, dark streets mean easily constructed barricades. A wide boulevard means that rebellers now require much more material. The boulevard Richard Lenoir, for example, was purely strategic, built to cut through radical-prone parts of the city by paving over. This feels like it's going to be kind of esoteric. I thought maybe it would actually like explain why Paris looks so weird but it feels like it's just like a kind of nerdy uh urban planning video which I am into however I get the feeling that my chat might not be into this <laughs> so I think we're gonna skip this one two years renovating a crumbling French castle oh French again ew stinky ew do it anyways? No, no, no. I I have too many videos to get through. I, I gotta skip some of them, I think. I can't believe I'm about to watch a video that's two minutes long. Look at the most recent thing I sent in Dumpster Dive. It's just a picture. <laughs> Wait, is this... uh? Let me pull it up here. Is this in? Hang on, let me look. Because I've seen a building that looks really similar to this. In Ypsilanti, Michigan. No, it's a different building, but it's really pretty similar. Can I find like a good quality picture of it? Yeah, so uh, this is where my sister went to uh, went to college. And the college is not far from here. In fact, I believe part of it is just right across the street. Um, but yeah, this this town in Michigan notoriously has a water tower that looks like something else. Yeah, is this where the term bricked up came from? <laughs> it even has stuff coming out the top. I hate that you pointed that out, honestly. Genuinely. It could use a little more planting around the base. <laughs> That's so... Ugh. I feel like looking at this for too long might be against TOS. Let's just watch this video. <laughs> Two and a half years ago, we quit our jobs in Paris. Oh god, it's a British person in France. Okay. Hold it together. We'll be fine. We'll be fine, chat. <laughs> Left the city and our friends behind and took the biggest gamble of our lives. We decided to spend all of our savings on buying a crumbling chateau, hoping to be able to renovate it into our dream home and begin a new life in the countryside. British. This chateau has 16 rooms, plus a cellar and an attic space, but it only had two toilets when we arrived. One of the biggest tasks for us when we started renovating. I feel like when I hear the word chateau, thank you, by the way, Shiko, for that lovely commentary. Uh, I picture something bigger than this, but this is still cool. We had two toilets when we arrived. One of the biggest tasks for us when we started renovating was to install more bathrooms, a heating system, get electricity to all the floors. We had to find a way to bring in all of those pipes without damaging. Chateau the is castle the in chateau French. Yeah, I know, which makes me much. picture something bigger. So the only way to do that was through the entrance hallway under the stairs. We did have to remove all the tiles that were here, but we took that opportunity to put down this really beautiful Pierre de Bourgogne. That's stone nice. That could have been. I like the. Uh, I like the uh, the border. I don't even know what to call that. Architecture brain is blanking on what that's called, but I like that. Used in the 18th century. Would you say you are a professional builder now? Well, I never <laughs> wanted to become a builder. That wasn't the plan, was it? No. The problem is when we budgeted the renovation work. Oh, so he's French a, and she's British. Turn out for several the reasons. The job, yeah, that's the name much. of it. Yeah. And then we had two options: either, you know, not to buy it, 
or want to find a way to renovate it. Worst couple less. ever. And we decided we were so much in love with this place. And crazy enough. And crazy enough to go for it anyway. And that's how we became builders, full-time builders. Okay, I don't care about your life story. I just want to see the, the house. <laughs> Get back to work. <laughs> we calculated everything as precisely as possible, but we made one major mistake. I like French yeah. people. And that was <laughs> With the facade. The facade. Yeah. I think we had budgeted about 25,000 and the quote came in at 100,000. Yeah, that sounds more like it. There was no way not like to it. do the facade and we couldn't do it ourselves. So we had to spend that money. In fact, there was- Bro's a little goofy. He likes demons. to have fun. With the child in the wall. Flippy origin story? Possible flippy origin story? <laughs> and we managed to do three. Yo, that looks nice. Holy shit. Wait. I was kind of clowning on spending $100,000 on that, but that looks nice. Look at that. I mean, at what point are you just rebuilding the house? <laughs> at what point are you just pretty much rebuilding the house, though, is my question. We managed to do three out of the four facades. Are we happy? Want to live in a restored French chateau? I'm going to need more gifted subs for that, Britta. <laughs> and probably not Originally, from you since we that's living, your money. Well, I say living, but it was more like camping out of cardboard boxes on the first floor whilst we renovated the second floor, which was the fourth. Oh, your life must be so hard living in your French chateau. Sorry, quarters, that was me. That was me. And mean. we transformed those into our private living quarters. I want to live in those French tunnels full of skeletons. Yeah, dude. Fill up with two peas. I am pretty impressed that they seemingly did the entire interior themselves. I mean, obviously these people were never going to do the, the facade. That's way too much work. Um, and especially like restorative work if you don't know the proper way to like clean and restore brick and stuff like that like no, no like no hobbyist is going to know how to do that but uh, it is still pretty impressive that they're doing the entire interior themselves do you have to pay taxes if you make your own house yeah you yeah yes you do <laughs> the most British looking people I've ever seen. It took us about six months, longer than expected, but the result is perfect for us. We have our small- Okay, I think I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I thought this would be more of like a time lapse or something, but I don't, it's just photos and then like cutaways of them like talking about the house. We just go to the, uh, the are they just going through like the, how much did it cost the result? The guest rooms. Okay, then they're just going like room by room. The lockdown. Bro. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. You guys live in a French chateau. You know what? I don't care what your experience with the lockdown was like, okay? What is this? This is just called strange architecture. Three and a half minutes long. 345. Ryish, also would a Minecraft video on a building project be fitting for the dumpster dives topic? Uh, I think I have already too many videos, um, uh, so I would say in general yes, but I probably won't get it to- get to it today, if you haven't already submitted it. Are these just pictures of buildings? Oh god, the- <laughs> Okay, so, to start off here, uh, this looks real. This might be a Frank Gehry project, which, uh... 
I can roast Frank Gary. I don't know if this is Frank Gary though. Maybe it's not, but it sure does look like one. I'll roast Frank Gary in a second because I already did it to Zaha Hadid. Um, another architect that I really don't like very much. This is like, I can't even tell what's going on here. This is a rendering. This is not a real photo. Uh, th this is a, this is, if it's not a rendering, then it's like a photo collage. It's not a real building. Is that real? This is like an art piece more than anything. Frank Gehry roasted some people, though, actually, for real. Yeah, there is a legendary photo of him just going like that. <laughs> Saw that building last week in Orlando. Interesting. <laughs> At first, I was like, what's wrong with this? <laughs> I, don't, I don't see what's wrong with it. This, what? How? Did they just build the roof around the tree? This is a really awful video. I'm sorry. <laughs> I kind of like that. Pretty sure this one is just like a painting. This one would actually be kind of cool if the roof just lined up with the fucking window. Like, I don't love it, but, you know, it's an interesting idea if it just lined up. God damn it. That, that pisses me off. Oh, this is, um, Astoria? Is that the name of it? In Greece? This is like a mon- like a ancient monastery. Um, it's very cool. It's like- it's built on the cliffs like that. What the fuck? Piano and a violin. Oh, th this is a famous building in Poland, I believe. Um, I don't remember who the architect is or where it is, but I have seen this before. This is like uh, this is like a a glitch. <laughs> Poland possible Chico reference? Wait, why? <laughs> I must have missed. I must have missed context there. Oh, you're Polish. Cool. I've seen that one before. I'm just vibing to the music, and the pictures kind of suck. <laughs> but you know what? It's like three minutes long. I'll watch it. I've seen this building in person, too. I actually have a photo of it that I took myself that's way better than this. I'm not even going to lie. I'll pull it up. be done with this is there any is there any in here that like i actually have something to say about there's a lot of like alien spaceship looking ones i think this is this is traditional architecture in yemen i believe um and yemen actually uh in yemen they built some of the first like quote unquote skyscrapers let me find this yeah this is a, a city in yemen called uh shibam s-h-i-b-a-m um and they built like really tall <laughs> buildings in the desert and this was like this is like more than a thousand years old or some shit yeah the like traditional uh architecture in yemen so very cool it's a real city it almost doesn't look real isn't the age of consent in yemen like nine why the fuck would i know that <laughs> Why the fuck would I know that? 
I'm just I, their buildings are cool. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Fucking. <God>. Uh. <laughs> um. But what was I gonna do? Oh yeah, I have a picture of that building in Prague, which is actually a, it's a Frank Gehry building. Um. And it's not my favorite, but you know what? It's better than most of the shit that he's done. Uh, but let me pull up Frank Gehry's architecture. <laughs> Shiko, what are you doing in Yemen? Uh... So this is Frank Gehry's architecture. This is by far his most uh, well-known building uh, in Bilbao, Spain. But yeah, it all just looks like crumpled paper because it is. It, it's exactly what it is. Uh, <laughs> generally speaking, he designs his buildings from motifs made of like just literal trash. Like it's not even a joke. This is like a known thing that in his architecture studio, they like crumple up pieces of paper and like paper bags and like uh, and stuff like that. And this is that's how the architecture gets made. That's like the, the motif that inspires this this mound of, of metal. This is a really bad one. This is a really, really bad one. I want to find the crumpled bag one because there was one that he like basically just said this one looks like French fries. <laughs> There was one that he basically outright said was inspired by a crumpled bag. Um, and it just looks like a crumpled bag. Is it this? Well, here you see some of their... <laughs> like, look at this. Oh, that... Is that Gary? Man, he looks really old now. This is like the kind of stuff, though. I mean... This is with the brilliant work that's being done in Frank Gehry's office. <laughs> it's fun. Like, what is that? Um, this is Frank Gehry paper bag. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, dude, it's, it's literally based on, like, a crumpled paper bag. Like, why? Who fucking... <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean, here I am, like, I, I'm making fun of it, but I'm sitting here talking about it. Um, which I think is the point. Like, it's postmodern, ugly bullshit, but I think the point is that making architecture like this is what put him on the map. Um, so, you know what? Honestly, it worked. It worked for him. Uh, there is another one in Seattle, I believe. Uh, Experience Music Project. This, I think, is straight up one of the ugliest buildings I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's, look at it from above. I think it's supposed to look like a heart, um, but God, is it gross. God, is it ugly. I, I just, it, it doesn't resemble a building. This is kind of like the only even like remotely appealing view of it, and it's still ugly. <laughs> but as soon as you look at it from any other angle, it immediately becomes an atrocity. Like, why, dude? Look at this. What the hell, man? <laughs> uh, look up New Orleans architecture, just like in general. Wait, hang on. Maybe a, a little careful here. Okay, it's fine. I mean, I get. I guess I didn't expect anything weird from searching New Orleans, but you never know. You might see some titties. <laughs> What are we looking at here? I mean, this is really nice. Like, I, I like the way the, like, row houses and shotgun houses and stuff in uh, New Orleans look. These are really cool drawings as well. The old, like, French colonial style, I believe is what this is called. I like this. I think it's very cool. It's very nice. I had something else I was gonna... Oh, yeah, I was gonna pull up my photo of that Frank Gehry house. Let me just go on face cam for a moment since I'm digging through my personal files with all sorts of personal information. Oh, here it is.
Wait, why can't I find it now? What the fuck? Here we go. Dox yourself, coward. <laughs> I know where you live. Yeah, Britta is allowed to know where I live. So yeah, this is a Frank Gehry building in, in uh, Prague. And this is my photo of it. I think it's nice. I would like to share with the class. There you go. Oh, I, got, I had a hydrate come in seven minutes ago. I got two of them. This is framed and in our living room. Yeah, I mean, the, this building is one of his better ones, and it's still kind of ugly, but I just think this is a nice picture. I like it. Pee pee poo poo. Okay, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, okay, I'll maybe watch, like, one more video. Is there a really good one in, uh... Oh, the third and the seventh. Yeah, I've seen this, uh... This video. I think I watched it for a class, actually. Let's watch one of these mansion ones. I think this is a good way to end it, actually. <laughs> Another bad multi-million dollar mansion. Okay, here we go. 13 minutes long. This will be our last one for the, for the dive. Nineteen, thirteen sixty nine. Londonary Sorry. Place in the Hollywood Hills, a short walk away from the iconic Sunset Strip. This bachelor's paradise yeah, is dude. made up of fourteen thousand square feet and boasts six bedrooms, ten baths, a yoga room with living plant walls, a wellness spa fully equipped with a cryo that dream photo of him with this huge, Jill, huge Jill. <laughs> a movie theater, bar and entertainment lounge. Guy sounds like Stevo. Yeah, he he does. What was that dream photo of him with the sun and the moon and it got 400 likes on Twitter? Damn. <laughs> that Elden Ring video I posted got like 50 some likes on Twitter. That, that's one of my better tweets. Living plant walls. Yeah, those are actually kind of cool. I will defend those. I actually kind of like those. Um, and they're usually, the upkeep on them is usually not too bad if it's not like huge. Um, I wonder if they'll, they probably won't go into how they work, but if they don't, I can like pull up an in infographic on them. Wine cellar and a double deckered glass bottom pool. Live life in God mode. Every facet control. <laughs> Live life in God mode. As you Thanks, Steve-O. The world's most seductive LA view. Bro, this is Bojack this Horseman's is house. Entertainer's <laughs> compound, and it can be yours for $35 million. Come on and take a look. This is dead ass Bojack Horseman's house. <laughs> Follow me up this grand staircase that's gonna lead you in the home. I call this stairway to heaven. Dude, I would not, I wouldn't trust this living guy with anything. Walls, P -S 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 -H. Step it up with living flesh walls. <laughs> true, true. This guy was a Botox surgeon millionaire and blew it all in this and no one is buying it now. He's bankrupt. Oh my God. Wait, is this, is this the guy in the video? Is he the guy or is this like a real estate agent? Only a few more subs away from being able to afford this. Yeah. Yeah, so close. Just one more sub is all I need, guys. <laughs> and why? Because when you get up here, all your dreams come true. This is all Tuscan leathered stone from Italy. You have this beautiful water feature. What is it? Is it art? After a couple cocktails, a playground, whatever it is, it looks way cooler at night. What is he talking about? Up, and then boom, you hit the view right when you hit the door. What is he talking about? We have these big grand ceiling heights, about 28 foot ceiling heights. That's the horror stone, so you could see all the This is Bojack Horseman's house. Everything's touch of a button. <laughs> touch of a button code to get in the house. Touch of a button for all the windows. What I really love about modern homes is the indoor-outdoor. You leave your doors and windows, they pocket on both sides. It's not only a modern, it's also luxury, so the space lends itself out for the couch. I wonder how much in, thermite I could fit in that basement. Of wine and overlook so I'm sink. curious if we'll see it, but um, usually the caveat of these, uh, um, like, big, big sliding doors is that it takes, like, a huge metal beam, uh, above it. I'm not sure if they'll even pan up high enough. Oh yeah, they did. Is the in Yeah. Actually, this isn't too bad. But yeah, these usually have like a massive bulkhead on them. Uh which isn't like the end of the world, but I mean, this house is probably built out of steel and not out of wood. Um 
so another thing that makes it probably ridiculously expensive hanging there's a sex dungeon in this video oh god have a glass of wine and overlook the city and laugh with friends views behind you views on both sides because it opens up and then you got to have the motorcycle just in case one night you want to fire her up and then ride it down there out to sunset <laughs> Why is it in so the living the room, big, bro? Beautiful deck, all covered in the Sahara stone. Not only is this the perfect. I actually, I have to say, I don't hate the house itself, but it's one of those like money can't buy taste situations. Like it's decorated atrociously. <laughs> it is decorated absolutely atrociously. <laughs> The actual house it's itself is like fine though. It's, it's just kind of modern, and basic. And it completely spills over Los Angeles, but it's a double decker, see through double glass decker. bottom pool. You can see down to the next pool under and the next deck under, but what's even cooler, you can see right up. You have this really great <laughs> is that cool? pool, and it also is, is that, a great Baja. Is that cooler? It feels like he's implying something there. It feels like he's implying something nefarious there. Am I crazy? <laughs> I'm like, I. Yeah, what are you like? What are you looking up at? You're just gonna see people's feet and ass cheeks. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> you might see the homies nuts. Like, what are you, what are you looking at? Shelf. So if you want to lay in it, or you have young kids that are here, they could play right here in this little pool. But what I really dig about these homes. It's just everything's connected. Everything's easy. Everything's on one level on this level. How much While coke you, you think this guy team, did before you this? You could be doing your work in this office, staring over all of Los Angeles. This white onyx Enough, fireplace yeah. bifurcates the formal living room to the formal dining room. Bifurcates. This formal dining room is all adorned by the gorgeous view from the This dining room has never been used. Plateware, the beautiful cutlery, gorgeous bronze designer light fixture. Minecraft Everything fireplace, is true. In this house. Hey, yo, is that Maurice? Is that Maurice? They got Maurice in the wall. <laughs> piece of art in this house. They got fucking Maurice in the walls. <laughs> so here we have the kitchen. What I love so much about this kitchen, it's not only chic, but it's a chef's kitchen. Get it's him out of there. <laughs> you got this top of the house. line Gaganu hibachi grill. And right behind me, you have a commercial grade herb garden. It's fully equipped. And with this is the slaves quarters. You grow all of your herbs, your favorite things that you love to cook with fresh and then pop them right on the grill. So this is another favorite feature of mine. It is called the Top Brewer. It retails for about $15,000. This takes coffee beans, grinds them fresh. With the touch of the button, you have 16 beverages from espresso, cappuccino, any type of milk, and then also sparkling waters and cold beverages. And it just comes from a faucet. <laughs> it just comes from a fucking faucet. <laughs> And it always breaks, yeah. Here we are in the chef's kitchen. Now this is where the real work takes place. You've mm. got eight burners, full refrigerator, Morris, sink. MFFFFFFMFFFMGHHHMFFF. Muffle translation. They took my my fucking semblance of self. Can't have shit in Detroit. That yeah, that's that's what he said. That, that's so Maurice. Everything. That was neon white music. What <laughs> was it? Like right here. Are in the no, no, it wasn't. Now, this is where the real work takes place. You've got eight burners. I can kind of see like the level stingers like comparison, need, but no. You even have access straight outside in case you're bringing in a catering crew. This is behind the scenes where it can get dirty. You can leave dishes. You can have a. Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. Don't talk to me until I've put my mouth directly on the coffee faucet. Just had a had a good drink for an hour or two. Don't talk to me until I've had my morning cocaine off of my, <laughs> off of my Tuscan leather, <laughs> whatever the fuck it's called. This is nice, but it needs a big live, laugh, love sign in the kitchen. <laughs> I think that would fix it. True. Yeah, you're right. I did. I did get the feeling something was missing. Mess, and then the front of the house is all sleek and modern. This family room is super cozy. You can watch TV. You could just stare out at the view. It completely opens up to the outdoors. These Fleetwood doors pocket, and it makes a seamless transition Fleetwood to doors? And I love this corner swing. You can sit and just take in the whole view. 
So with all this indoor outdoor flow, you'll never get cold. <laughs> On the video, Christ. Very sleek, modern heat strips. They're very tucked away and beautiful. Also, come yeah, I was going to say, he had like a Prince and Elvis pick. Outdoor dining. I didn't this see the other one. This is a fabulous setting for a dinner party, right off of the kitchen, just off the family room. You have everything flowing in this house, which is really what California lives in. Get a nice about. barbecue. People don't go to the office. People work from home. So you got to have... <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine that was cut like from like a, a 10 minute rant about like like we got to get the kids back in schools and the fact they're putting shit in the vaccines man people they don't go into the office they work from home <laughs> like and they just like they're like okay 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 Darren just just chill out chill out and then they just cut that one little <laughs> one little spot they're putting shit in the vaccines man <laughs> The place and I, where is all this the one? Our deals get done. Come in here. This is a space station hovering <laughs> over Los Angeles. This, this is where he closes big deals and goes in full God mode. And then when he wants to take a break and he needs to steam is off, is his name Darren? Right I have no here, idea what his name takes is. Takes a dip right in that pool. I could probably go back and check. I don't think it's said. I don't think it's said. First floor guest bedroom. It's a really beautiful space to rest after a long night out. What I love about this room is the floating bed, all adorned in satin. This is a got live bamboo. This is a bad bedroom. Around. Am I crazy? I think my bedroom is bigger than this. The house. <laughs> and as we talked about, this is a smart home, so everything is at your fingertips. There are blackout shades that are automatic and give you that extra darkness so you can sleep in. What more could you ask for in a guest room? So come with me and I'll take you down to our Disney lower Channel level. original movie. Yeah, that's true. This one has a sex dungeon. All right. We're here in the home theater, which has gorgeous purple and gold. What the throughout. fuck? It gives it a very modern elegance. You have a 25 foot screen and you've got 4D sound system throughout. 4D? We have candy. We have the cashmere blankets. You get the entire theater experience. Yeah, my house has a 5D sound system. We're down on the third level. The third level is when it's 2.30 in the morning and the cops come knocking on the door and want to shut down the party. You come down here. This is the ultimate adult playground. We have everything for you. 12 foot fireplace, 12 okay. foot ceilings. And remember, we're underground now and we have 12 foot ceilings. We have the full bar, fully stacked, gold bar, whiskey. You could pick your poor. I like how he says it's it's fully stacked as if that isn't like 50 copies of the same like $500 bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Am I crazy? I would not call that fully stacked, bro. You got It's like, okay, which one of the same whiskey do you want? <laughs> Bar whiskey, you could pick your poison. You have your glass foosball table just for the occasional foosball match. What? Billiards, gentlemen's table, you got Dude, even the pool table's ugly. Table. Touch of a butt and the door's fully automated. Did he just say touch of a touch of the, the butt? And this is the third level patio deck. Come out and I'll show you guys. Remember I told you about <laughs> He's that been there for the probation pool. period. There's definitely up, worse places you can be on house arrest. Upstairs. Really, really cool. I've never seen anybody do it like this. We have another seating area over here, lounges everywhere. This house is meant to have fun, enjoy yourself, let loose, and relax. The outdoor kitchen. It only, <laughs> and enjoyment of life only comes at the low, low cost of $35 million. <laughs> and it's fully loaded. You got the kegerator, world the shit. deep fryer. The pizza oven, the ice makers. Of course, there's a pizza you oven. Got the swim up bar. If you know, dude, do you think anyone ever goes in this corner? <laughs> like, uh, gotta have my deep fryer by the pool. I actually like to keep my toaster right on the edge of the pool, so I can have like fresh toast while I'm in the pool. You know? You guys know what I'm talking about? This <laughs> there's little seats right here to swim up. Eat, drink, this is just the worst you pool, yeah. Jacuzzi down here, and then here is the pool. Real talk, imagine the field day really burglars nice would have at this place. I mean, it's probably in like a gated neighborhood or something, right? <laughs> yeah, pool toasters are cool, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Want my air fryer in arms reach for my PC. 
the vacant the vacant maker next to the bed is very very uh very necessary <laughs> just look up oh god people change here take showers here go to the bathroom you don't have to go into the house so everything is already thought of for you Every man cave needs a wine cellar. There's a okay. special code to get in, and behind me it holds about 1,500 bottles. Right in that wine cellar right now, it's a quarter of a million dollars worth of wine. And if you're lucky, oh, peeing in that upper pool. The Wellness center. Okay, no sex when dungeon yet. I'm kind of waiting for that. Uh, essential to play well. Kind of wait, waiting for that to and drop. Also to live well. So he right here under roof built a state of the art wellness center. So come Spray with me the just glass. through the automatic door into the wellness center. We've got aerial yoga here, your free weights. You can use- This is huge, bro. Here. This is bigger than the apartment in my, uh, or in the, the gym in my apartment. It's crazy. Or a Sorry, 1,500 bottles of wine? Holy shit. Steam shower, whichever you She almost prefer. walked into and it. And then we even have a cold and hot plunge, which is perfectly situated just under this 70 inch screen. Of course, of course, man. This is my favorite room in the house. This is a hot yoga room with living walls. So you can come in here for a great yoga class. You could also meditate in here and take in the fresh oxygen. Fresh oxygen. Here in the wellness center, we have a fifty thousand dollar. Actually, that's hard to come by in LA. You know what? That's hard to come by in LA. <laughs> Bio chamber. This is amazing for swelling, bone and muscle aches. It helps to turn over cells, rejuvenate. It's also known to help shed those few pounds that you might be holding on to. It's the what? Skin. There are so many things that this. This is like. I, this is like that gif of like of Joe Rogan like fucking emerging from the the bath. That's like him coming out of that looking like a like a new man. The fucking cryo chamber. <laughs> that's that's insane. This is useful for it is well worth its fifty thousand dollar price tag. Fifty thousand dollars. So inside this services room, you can lie down and get a facial massage. You can also get Botox, anything you like. And then if you come over here, we have a salon where you can get your hair done, you can get groomed, get your makeup done, you can get ready for any event right here in your own home. This is a sense. I'm not gonna lie. If I had thirty-five million dollars to spend, I would just buy like a million-dollar house, and then I would just leave. You know, I would just never be in that house. <laughs> Am I crazy? Like, I don't want everything in my house. I want to like Joe go Rogan's places. Nipples. They are like golf tees. Yeah, yeah, and I hate that you just made me think about it. Sensory <laughs> deprivation tank. It has its own water system. Salt water, you shut the hood, you completely float in it, and it completely shuts off all stimulus. This it is really Joe takes Rogan's away the stress house. And anxiety that the Sunset Strip could bring to you sometimes, especially on a morning when you wake up after a few too many cocktails. And right off the sensory deprivation tank, there's a button right here. Press the button, <laughs> and the door magically opens. Okay, I need to mentally prepare myself for this. <laughs> This is the devil's dungeon. Come on, follow me in. Stop. <laughs> Did you really think I was going to take you in this room? Come on, get out of here. I can't show you everything. Come on, let's go. Get out of here. You have seen what? the lower level wellness center. You've seen the living floor. Now let's take a look at the sleeping quarters. Come with me. They have a secret sex dungeon? Just over this gorgeous walkway, you've got <laughs> it's like a red room for photos. Oh, master. my sweet Come summer child. <laughs> This bedroom has a fabulous walk-in closet. It's en suite with a bathroom, but uh -huh. what do you really care I about? I hate that in this sink. Room? Right here, the view. It's an amazing 280 degree view in the guest bedroom. 280 degrees? Why not just go the full mile and Toxic Storm, thank you for the follow. Why don't you just go the whole mile and just make it 360? <laughs> what is 280 degrees? Who cares? <laughs> It's the perfect Sex place to take the sun, <laughs> I didn't even the pools, notice. Just down below you and taking all of LA. You see the ocean just over here. Come on in here. Come this on is in. The here. master of masters. This is where you're going to really look at the city by yourself and say, "You know what? I've made it. This is it." 
and you step up on this pedestal, futuristic Japanese bed with the neon lights. This is where all the, the two the two hosts here are really like they're really sending me because like the guy is just like like between lines of cocaine is just like this is this is where you go god mode bro this this is like the <laughs> you know and then the the woman is just like here is the sink <laughs> so, that beauty I, I think this is the last video i'm gonna watch two walls of glass that fully open up but i might do another one of these because i realize there's a lot of places it, i could go with the architecture right theme. Up here in your very own space station but just steps away all the action and the entertainment of the sunset strip Believe it or not, this is actually one of my favorite elements of the house, the master bath. Because it feels almost like a spaceship. It's got this really cool 3D reflectant tile. There's a steam shower. Ew. Six shower heads all over. What? One for each of the sides for you and your partner. It's got the big bench to relax. Jacuzzi tub. I don't like that got tile. The big view of Los Angeles. Yeah, I don't like that and tile. These matte black sinks with all the gold finishes. You have the TV and the Huge mirrors. windows in the bathroom, the yeah. Big skylight. And then the towels, it's even embroidered with the address, 1369. And this is if you had a long night and you forget where you are and you're like, oh, I'm home. <laughs> Does this guy have something he want, He needs to talk about? Like, are you good, bro? <laughs> I feel like he's, uh, I feel like he has some like, uh, you know, some trauma that he's trying to deal with here, but it's just like, <laughs> you know, not the place. <laughs> and one of the last features of the master is the master closet. This was actually designed after the Gucci store. This is all Italian cabinetry. Just all perpetually all hungover. Glass, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold details. Everything's lined in suede. And then you got the big skylight for the natural light. And that helps you see the colors, get ready and go, okay, yeah, I'm ready to take on the day. One of my favorite mm -hmm. features of the house is this rotating watch winder. It's only accessible by fingerprint, so nobody else can get in here and steal your amazing watches. And you gotta have something like this because you never want your watches. How to many be off. watches do you have? Living in a house like this, you always gotta know what time it is. <laughs> What's up, Blue Knight? Thirteen sixty nine Londonderry Place. You're very. What fave animal are you the asking? Stuff what entailed and contained in the red room made this man never the same. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He stared into the abyss and it fucking stared back, bro. That's why he's got the sunglasses on. You could, you could see into the depths of hell in his eyes, man. <laughs> You're not prepared to meet that man's gaze. <laughs> not after the shit he's seen. Yeah, his house is thirty-five million. What is my favorite animal? I mean, it's really basic, but I'm a I'm a dog guy. Otherwise, I like sloths. I think sloths are cool. Like if I had to pick something exotic, I mean, but I like I like have had dogs and stuff in the past, so I, I'm inclined to say dogs. But sloths, they're funny. I like them. Praia dubias. I've never heard of those. Let's finish this video. I think it's almost over. Very own live well, play well compound located in the heart of West Hollywood. Oh, that With was just it pretty much. With glass bottom pool, hot yoga studio and salon, movie theater, wine cellar, bar and entertainment lounge, and your personal spa insane. and wellness center. Actually it's the insane. sleekest sunset strip modern ever conceived. A design perfect for entertaining, relaxing, right. and living like royalty. A place where... Um, I don't want to hear that man speak again. Comment section, how big is the house? 2%. Pissed that they didn't show the red room? 1%. The dude, 97%. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. That's about right indeed. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, they didn't mention the red room. I know, that's like the most important feature. Look it up. It's... Atten essentially just a string made of millions of tiny animals. What? Favorite color, I would say, is green. I like green. Favorite eye, and eye color? I mean, I'm biased towards my own. I have blue eyes. Um, but I think they're cool. I like blue eyes. Um, what was it called again? Praia Dubia. <laughs> what the fuck?
<laughs> Someone did like a pixel art one. These are crazy. So they're like a type of jellyfish, basically. This is wild. Deep sea stuff is crazy and mostly horrifying. Wait, it reminds me I want to pull something up. Oh, there's like not that many photos of them. Here's one. You guys ever seen an oarfish? These things are horrifying. Next dumpster dive, weird and wacky animals. Honestly, that's kind of a good idea. Here's an oarfish. These things are terrifying. <laughs> Love the Reaper Leviathan. Uh, yeah, I feel like the Reaper Leviathan has to be based on oarfish. It's like an oarfish with pincers. These things are ridiculous. Okay, there's more pictures of them than I thought, but they're all dead. They're all just like washed out. That's kind of gross. Seen it from Animal Crossing? That is also where I where I know it from. It is based off of it. Yeah, I kind of fit.